Okay, in this video we're going to talk about distance and displacement using position and a little bit of velocity and there aren't going to be any integrals here so if you're later in a calculus course uh, there are other ways of doing these problems and you should watch a different video about this. But if you're just kind of starting out uh, this video is definitely for you. So first we need to know what distance and displacement are. So let's start with displacement because it's kind of the easier one to calculate. Um, so displacement is just how far from the start you are. So a particle will be moving left and right or up and down. Uh, it'll have a starting point. And the displacement is just how far you are from that starting point at the end of the journey and in what direction. So you could be to the left or to the right. Um, so for example, you might see a displacement of negative six. A displacement of negative six means that you are six units to the left or below um, the starting point. So displacements have a kind of a magnitude and a direction, which means they're really a vector quantity. Uh, but we don't need to worry about that at the beginning of calculus. And then we also need to define distance. So distance uh, has a little more going on. So distance is the sum of the absolute values of the displacements on each leg of motion. So if we have something that's moving back and forth along a straight line, sometimes it's moving forward, sometimes it's moving back, um, ultimately it will stop. What we want to do is add up all the absolute values of the displacements while it's moving. So kind of, uh, I drew like a little example here. So if we have this as a starting point, so that, that like particle right there is gonna move. So let's say initially it moves six units to the right. Then it's gonna move uh, nine units to the left. So that has a displacement of negative nine from where it was. And then it's gonna move five units to the right again. So that's another displacement. So the overall displacement is just the sum of um, the displacement. So, 6 plus 5 is 11, minus 9 is 2. So our displacement is just where we ended up minus where we started, and that's just 2. So you're 2 units to the right of where you started if you make all these moves. Distance traveled, on the other hand, we have to look at each leg and add up the absolute values of the displacement. So it's going to be 6 plus the absolute value of negative 9 plus the absolute value of 5. Technically, it's the absolute value of 6 also. Um, and you add those up and you get 20. So this thing moved a lot, um, but its overall displacement was just two units. A key idea is that you can only turn around, um, change direction, at a point where the velocity is zero. So the process of finding distance traveled is gonna involve first finding when velocity is equal to zero. So let's do an example. So here's the problem. We have position, which is given by x of t, um, is sine of 2t minus t, and t is between 0 and pi over 2. So that's going to be important because those are the start and end points, and we want to find displacement on the interval from 0 to pi over 2, and we want to find distance traveled on the interval from 0 to pi over 2. Let's deal with displacement first. So our displacement is going to be where we stop, which is um, at t equals pi over 2. So our position there is going to be x of pi over 2, and then minus where we started, which is going to just be at t equals 0, so minus x of 0. Now we just substitute into the position function. So if you have a position function, displacement is super easy to find. It's, it's just like substitution, basically. So that's x of pi over 2. Just plug in pi over 2. Um, sine of 2 times pi over 2 is just sine of pi, and then minus pi over 2. And minus, we're going to substitute 0 to get sine of 0 minus 0. Um, so if you remember from the unit circle, which it's a really good idea to remember all that stuff, the sine of zero and the sine of pi are both zero. So really this whole thing is just negative pi over two. So that's our displacement. Displacements are easier to find than distance travel. Distance travel is gonna be a little more work. So let's do that. All right, distance travel. If you remember distance travel, first thing you really need to do is figure out when did this thing turn around? So we need to find the turning points which really involves finding derivatives. So first we need the derivative. So I'm gonna find v of t, which is, so I think it's important that you write this. You need to make a connection between position and velocity. v of t is equal to x prime of t, which is equal to, so I'm gonna use the chain rule on sine of 2t to get two cosine of 2t. And then I'm kind of just using the power rule on minus t to get minus one, or you just look at that and know the derivative. Um, so I get, that's my velocity function. I need v of t to equal zero. So that means that cosine of 2t 
is going to be equal to positive one half. So there's two places on the unit circle where that can happen. It's in quadrant one and in quadrant four. So that means that 2t could be equal to either pi over 3 or um, 5 pi over 3, which means that t would be equal to, so those are from the unit circle, definitely memorize the unit circle, uh, t would be equal to pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6. But now there's kind of an issue, right? Because if you go back to the original problem, we have to be between 0 and pi over 2. 5 pi over 6 is definitely not, so we're going to just get rid of that. So the only place this thing turns between zero and pi over two is at pi over six. So we're kind of ready to do this. What I like to do is make a table that has t and x of t, and I'm gonna put the starting point, the ending point, and any turning point in the table. So zero, pi over six, and pi over two. Now I'm gonna substitute into x of t. We already did two of these. So zero, um, it's gonna be the sine of pi over three because two times pi over six is pi over three. So sine of pi over three and then minus pi over six. Sine of pi over three is radical three over two, and then minus pi over six, and then uh, pi over two, we already found that we get negative pi over two. Um, okay, so now what I wanna do is just find the distance. So distance is going to be equal to, so it's the absolute value of displacement on each leg of the journey. So there's the first leg. So the absolute value of x of pi over six minus x of zero, I think it's a good idea to write out this step. A lot of people try to skip this, and then if your work is wrong, it's really hard to follow. Just writing this keys somebody who's reading your work into what you think you're doing, so definitely write this. So then plus another leg of the journey, so it's gonna be plus absolute value of x of pi over two minus x of pi over six. So if you look, we're just finding displacement on each of those intervals. So it's like where you stop on that interval minus where you started that interval. Now let's just do a lot of stuff. So we're going to plug in. So at pi over 6, we get this. At 0, we just get 0. So that's actually all we're going to write there. And then plus, um, at pi over 2, we get negative pi over 2. And then minus the quantity, radical 3 over 2 minus pi over 6. And we'll close that absolute value. All right. So the thing in the first absolute value is already positive because radical three over two is bigger than pi over six. So I can just drop the absolute value because that's a positive. I need to kind of clean up what's inside of here before I really know what's going on. Um, so combining the negative pi over two, so it's negative pi over two plus pi over six is negative pi over three, and then minus radical three over two. Kind of luckily, uh, everything in there is negative which means that the absolute value is just the opposite of that. So it's going to be pi over 3 plus radical 3 over 2. So let's do that. And now we just combine everything, and we get that our distance traveled is radical 3 plus pi over 6. So you can see distance traveled is more complicated than displacement, so you kind of always hope that you're asked for displacement. But when you are asked for distance traveled, find the velocity, find the turning points, make sure they're on the interval, and then just go about finding the absolute value of all of the displacements and add them up. All right, so I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.